Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today I would like to talk about foot and ankle orthopedic problem. First of all, we must know the anatomy. The foot divided into three main sections. The first, it is called the hind foot, that is formed by the calcaneus and the talus. The second is mid foot, it is formed by the cuboid bone, naviculum, and the cuneiform bone. And the third, it is the fore foot, that is formed by the metatarsal and the phalanx. Important joints. First of all, the tibiotalar joint, it is also called the ankle joint, it moves in a plantar and dorsiflexion. flexion. Talocalcaneal joint, it is also called the subtalar joint, the movement is inversion and eversion. Important tendons that attach to the foot bones. First of all, Achilles tendon. Achilles tendon that it is attached to the calcaneum. It helps in the plant reflection of the foot. Tibial posterior tendon that it is attached to the navicular bone and the cuneiform bone helps in inversion of the foot. Tibial anterior tendon that is inserted to the mid cuneiform and in the first metatarsal it is helped in dorsiflexion of the foot. Lastly, the peroneal vis that is attached to the base of the fifth metatarsal helps in eversion of the foot. We have a definition come from Latin words talipis, equinus, and calcaneus. Talipis it is come, it is of two pores, talus and the pis. Talus means the ankle, the pis it is the foot. Equinus means the horse foot foot that is in position of a plant reflection at the ankle and this is like uh, look like that of the horse calcaneus means full dorsal deflection at the planus mean a flat foot clavus mean high arch foot varus mean the heel going towards the midline valgus means the heel going away from the midline four foot adduction mean the four foot going towards the midline Forefoot abduction means the forefoot going away from the midline. Clinical assessment. Symptoms. First of all, pain, whether localized or generalized pain. Pain localized, like see in shoes pressure on a tender cone over a toe or callosity on the sole. Osteoarthritic pain. Sometimes see at the first metatarsal, and this is due to osteoarthritis of the first metatarsal. Hallux valgus, a pyrabonion on a hallux valgus, a deformity in the big toe. It is lateral deviation of the big toe and will be exacerbated by a close fitting shoe. A functionally or mechanically unstable ankle often feel a better in a boot. Metatarsalgia is worse in shoes with high. Deformity is sometimes the main complaint. The patient may be abhor, a crooked toe or twisted foot, even if it is not painful. Parent, parent often worry about their children who are flat foot or toes. Swelling is common even in normal people, but it gains some significance if unilateral or strictly localized. The stability of the ankle or subtalar joint to produce a repeated episode of joint giving away. Here you must ask about any previous injury, the twisting injury of numbness and paresthesia may be felt in the old toes or circumscribed field served by a single nerve or one of the nerve root from spine. Sign with patient stand upright. Ask the patient to raise up tiptoes and then settle back on the heel. Note the posture of the heel through, through this movement. Normally the heel are slightly valgus while standing and inverted on tiptoe. The degree of inversion should be equal on two sides, showing that subtalar joint is mobile and tibialis posterior functioning. A view from behind, if there is excessive eversion of one foot, the lateral toes are more easily visible on the lateral side, and this is called too many toes sign. If you look to the heel from behind, heel is slightly valgus in a standing position, while the heel inverted equally in position called tiptoe. Too many toe sign, see here when there is 
weakness of tibialis posterior and their appearance of too many toe signs appear in this gait may be disturbed by pain muscle weakness deformity or stiffness a fixed equinus deformity result in the heel failing to strike the ground at the beginning of walking cycle sometimes the patient's force heel contact by hyperextending the knee if the ankle dorsiflex are weak the forefoot may hit the ground prematurely causing a slap this referred to as a foot drop during the swing through the leg is lifted higher than usual so the patient complain from foot drop walk in a gait called high stepping sign with patients sitting or lying we must go and follow the look feel move and check the stability look look for the toes and so should be inspected for skin changes the foot shows uh, the foot shows uh, uh, area of overload by producing callosity and there are often corresponding area of wear and sign of overload on the footwear atrophic changes in the skin and toenail are suggestive of neurological and vascular disorders a commonly fungal infection of the nail check deformity deformity may be seen in the ankle or foot or in the toes a foot that is set flat on the ground and right angle to the tibia is described as plantigrade it is normal fixed plant reflection pointing the words downwards it is said to be equinus doors deflection position called calcaneus abnormally high in step called piscavus downward arch called piscis plantaris lateral deviation of the great toes called hallux vulgus fixed deflection of the single interphalangeal joint called hammer toe or of all toes called claw toe swelling may be diffuse and bilateral or localized Unilateral swelling nearly always has a surgical cause. Bilateral swelling is more often medical in origin, like in lymphedema, in heart failure, and renal disease. Swelling over the medial side of the first metatarsal head, yani on the uh, bone on the uh, first metatarsal head, usually seen in the big toe, it is called bonion, and it is common in older women. Feel pain and tenderness in the foot and ankle localized very well to the affected structure the patient re really does show us where the pain or the problem is skin temperature is assessed and pulses must be felt remember that one in every six normal people does not have dorsal spedis artery sensation may be abnormal the precise distrib uh, distribution of any changes is important if a neuropathy is suspected, for example, in the diabetic patients, test also for vibration and also for position. Move. The foot comprises a series of joints that should be examined for movement. Ankle joint with the heel grafts in the left hand and the midfoot in the right hand. The range of plantar reflection and dorsal reflection should be estimated. Subtalar joint, it is important to lock the ankle joint when assessing the subtalar inversion and eversion. Inversion is normally greater than mid tarsal joint. One hand grip the heel firmly to stabilize the hind foot, while the other hand move the forefoot up and down for and from side to side. Toes, the metacarpophalangeal joint and sorry, the metatarsophalangeal joint and intermetaphalangeal joint are tested separately. Extension doors deflection of the big toe at metatarsophalangeal joint should be normally exceed 70 degree and the flexion of metatarsophalangeal joint is 10 degree. stability is assessed by moving the joint across the normal physiological plane or uh, noting any abnormal clump always compare the two joints medial and lateral stability are checked by stressing the ankle first in vulgus and then in varus Anterior posterior stability is assisted by performing the anterior drawer test. The patient lie on examination couch 
and with the hip and knee flexed and feet is resting on the couch surface. The examining grasp the distal tie of part of the tibia with both hands and push firmly backward, feeling on for abnormality and abnormal translation of the tibia upon the knee. Muscle power should be checked in any examination of involved the heel, feet and uh, the heel. Shoe should be checked. Footwear often added additional clue when examining the foot and ankle, providing valuable information about faulty stance of feet. Now we start about the foot abnormality and some orthopedic problem. First of all, congenital deformities. The first important thing is what we call talipes equinovarus. It is idiopathic club food. The second is talipes calcaneo vulgus, which is less common. It is more, sorry, more common, but it is more benign and rarely causing a problem. Occasionally, spina bifida and some other neurological condition can cause this deformity. So, spinal examination is mandatory. To start with, talipes equinovarus. It is also called congenital clubfoot or idiopathic clubfoot. The incidence is 1 to 2 per thousand birth. Male to female ratio is 2 to 1. It is one third. In one third of cases, it is usually present. We have three basic components ankle joint, subtalar joint, and forefoot. The ankle joint is a plant reflexed, that is, in equinus position. Subtalar joint, it is in inverted, in vase, while the forefoot is adapted. As you see here from this picture, the uh, ankle joint is in equinus, subtalar joint in, in varus, and forefoot adapted. Also here, more obvious picture of severe type of club foot, and it is very clear equinus, subtalar joint in varus, and forefoot in adduction. This is bilateral idiopathic club foot, and see the severity of uh, the condition in the right side and in the left foot. The causes. Idiopathic in most cases, it could be germ defect or a form of arrest in development. This condition sometimes may be associated with tight uterus. You see it in oligohydraminous or in twin babies. Neurological, neurological disorders and a neural tube defect that seen in myelomeningocele and in spinal dysphorism sometimes uh, discovered in these uh, problems. Genetic conditions such as arthrogryposis, dystrophic dysplasia, Freeman Sheldon syndrome, and amniotic constriction ring sometimes appear as a cause of this. Clinical feature At birth, the deformity is obvious. The foot in equinus varus of the foot, adduction, and supination of the forefoot. In severe type, we see small heel and calf muscle. We must examine for associated condition like developmental dysplasia of the hip, associated sometimes spina bifida, and also we must exclude arthrocryposis, which means absent of a crease in the leg. Sign of severity of a club foot. Short tendon Achilles, high and small heel, deep crease in the medial side of the foot. Foot looks smaller if it is unilateral in comparison to the normal side. Later on, after the child starts to walk, callosity at abnormal pressure area, internal torsion of the leg, and calf muscle wasting. Deformity done to prevent walking. X-ray. X-ray are used mainly to assess progress after treatment in older children. Anterior posterior film is taken with the foot in 30 degree plantar flex and the tube of the X-ray likewise angle 30 degree perpendicular to the foot. Line can be drawn through the long axis of the tail as parallel to the medial border and through the calcaneal parallel to its lateral border these two lines. They normally cross at angle of 20 to 40 degree. This angle is called kid's angle. But in clump food, usually these lines are in parallel position. 
in lateral view. Lateral film is taken with the foot in forced dorsiflexion. Line draw through the mid longitudinal axis of the calus and the lower border of the calcaneum should meet at an angle of about 40 degrees. A measurement of less than 20 degrees shows that calcaneum cannot be tilted up into the true dorsiflexion. The foot may be seen to be dorsiflexed, but it may be actually have a broken at a mid tarsal level, producing the so called rocker button deformity. So, in follow up of the child complaining of a club foot, we must check the lateral film to exclude this problem that is called rocker button deformity. Treatment. Treatment begin in the first few days of life. Repeated manipulation by adhesive strapping plaster, as you see here, or weekly serial manipulation and casting, and this must be follow certain order of correction, and succeeding succeeding grade it is about eighty percent. Usually, we need five sessions. We need five times to change the uh, cast with one week interval between one cast and other. And we must follow these instructions. This procedure called Ponsetti procedure. It is benefit up to six months of age. After that, it is of no much benefit. We must avoid false correction and we must know when to stop the casting. Percutaneous tendinoculus tenotomy usually needed. Maintain, maintaining the correction is very important and follow up to watch and avoid recurrence. As you see here, the patient with the club foot and then we start to manipulate and the gradual correction of the food. First of all is to correct the, the uh, forefoot adduction and then varus and then correct the equino. And up the patient by serial casting. Usually you need five sessions, five changing of the cast. This is a series of plaster casts showing the gradual correction for to maintain the corrected position. Boots on a bar, a foot abduction of brace, as you see here in this picture. Very clear. Are worn full time for three months and at night for at least for years so long duration of surgical treatment indication later presentation usually after age of six months of age failure of conservative treatment residual deformity after conservative treatment recurrence after the Ponsetti procedure soft tissue operation called Cincinnati operation which is mean release of the contractor, the talonavicular and the subtalar joint with posterior ankle joint are released. Tenotomy for flexor digitorum and flexor halluses tendons. Tendon elongation called ETA, elongation tendon Achilles, and also tibialis posterior elongation by Z lengthening a procedure. Sometimes we need tendon transfer and restoration of the bony uh, normal relationship should be bony operation indication usually accompanied with soft tissue operation these is restricted to older children type of bony operation one of it is called osteotomy to correct the food deformity wedge excision sometimes need elizarov external fixation this is, is restricted to the uh, complicated cases 
and lastly arthrodesis of the uh, joints sometimes of benefit in severe time as you see here this is no response for a lot of failure of operation so this patient need elizar of correction or arthrodesis of the joint and thank you we will continue uh, the, about uh, foot and ankle uh, orthopedic problems Pisiplanus or what we call uh, flat foot the medial border arch of foot is in contact with the ground it is um, common among children types flexible flat foot appear in toddlers as a normal stage in development and it is usually this appear between age of 4 to 10 years usually corrected spontaneously when the medial arch development occurs the arch can often be restored by simply dorsiflexing the great toe this is called jack test by dorsiflex the big toe the normal arch will return its normal shape the other type is called stiff or rigid type flat foot deformity that cannot be corrected passively should alter the examiner to an underlying abnormality congenital vertical talus should be excluded in older children condition to be considered are tarsal coalition inflammatory joint disorder neurological disorder. the other type is compensatory flat foot this deformity that occur in order to accommodate some other personal defect for example tight tendon achilles may be accommodated by averting the foot or if the lower limb are extremely external rotated the body weight fall anterior medial to the ankle and the feet go into valgus that is called charlie look flat foot in adult as in children the usual picture is of a flexible flat foot with no obvious cause however some underlying disorders may be regarded as a cause First of all, abnormal ligament laxity, tarsal coalition, the disorder of tibialis posterior, which is very important, post-traumatic deformity, degenerative arthritis, neuropathy, and muscle. As you see here, normal arch foot, and here the pisiplanus, or what we call uh, flat foot. When we look to the patient with the flat foot, sometimes in uh, dysfunction of tibialis posterior you see that too many toe sign positive as appear here in the picture high arc feet or what he called piscavus caused by muscle imbalance usually due to a muscular disorder associated with piccolo toes it may be seen in both feet mild cases no treatment require apart from well molded shoes severe type bone osteotomy may be. causes of piscavus there are rare congenital causes such as arthrogryposis but in the majority of cases piscavus result from acquired neuromuscular disorders like hereditary motor and sensory neuropathy spinal cord abnormality like tethered cord syndrome third poliomyelitis fourth from such as burns a compartment syndrome resulting in Wolfman contracture of the muscle of the toe. As you see here, it's very typical case of piscavus with a claw. Other subject called in toe. In towing mean the toes and the fore food directed medially. Common finding in a newly born and in children. We have a three main causes: metatarsus adduxus internal tibia torsion and the third one excessive femoral torsion. in metatarsus adductus normal hind foot medial deviated midfoot this can be diagnosed by look to the uh, to the plantar aspect of the foot and we see that the uh, forefoot is in C shape rather than straight flexible type of uh, metatarsus adductus we can correct it easily to the neutral position by adducting the foot. Treatment in a flexible type need repeated stretching of the uh, forefoot. If no 
benefit so repeated casting in a normal position rarely these cases need corrective osteotomy and correction by surgical intervention the prognosis is very internal tibial torsion usually presented by walking age if you look to the knee it is directed forward but when we look to the feet it is directed inward so the torsion here in the leg in the tibia these child, uh, children need a follow-up and usually corrected spontaneously the other cause for intergait, it is excessive femoral antiversion. Both knee and feet is pointed inward. Both knee and feet is deviated inward. Present during early childhood from age of three to seven years. Most of the cause is of intergait, and this is usually due to bad sitting position, which is called W position sitting. This will lead to increase of the femoral neck antiversion and will cause intergait for these children. Treatment, usually non-surgical treatment and uh, by avoiding way, uh, W sitting position. Surgical intervention, usually indicated if persist after age of 10 years and it is cosmetically unaccepted or functional gait problem. Usually derotation osteotomy for proximal femoral. Other important subject called hallux vulgus. It means lateral deviation of the big toe and varus deviation of the first metatarsal. This will lead to prominent head of the first metatarsal and usually cause bonion and may be seen in people who wear tight shoe. Loss of muscle tone in the forefoot in elderly, usually seen in rheumatoid arthritis and sometimes positive family history is a common. As you see here, there is deviation of the big toe laterally and deviation of the first metatarsal medially in severe condition we can see overriding of the second toe to the big toe clinical feature women are more than men affected by this problem age 40 to 60 years adolescence with positive family history sometimes seen and usually bilateral painless deformity and pain or in a flame bone or in, if there is osteoarthritis of first metacarp metatarsophalangeal joint. Difficulty in wearing comfortable show one of the important identic problem. As you see here, there is a deviation of the uh, big toe with uh, laterally and deviation of the first metatarsal medially with overriding of the second toe. Treatment asymptomatic and mild non progressive type conservative treatment. We by wearing comfortable uh, footwear with low heel. Severe progressive and painful deformity re requires surgical reduction of the deformity. Claw toe. Interphalangeal joints are flexed and metatarsophalangeal joints are, are in extended position. It is usually seen in poliomyelitis, rheumatoid arthritis, but sometimes seen in idiopathic uh, cases. It may be associated with this. Hammer toe, proximal interphalangeal joint flexed, distal interphalangeal joint and metatarsophalangeal joint extended and the cause is obscure. Shoe pressure produce a painful cord or callosity in deformed toes. As you see here, it is the claw toe and this is the hammer toe. This is a typical picture of what we call the claw, claw toe by hyperflexion of the uh, interphalangeal joint and hyperextension of the proximal interphalangeal joint. Also, this is hammer toe, and this is the site of the cone or callosity, the site of a pressure in the shoe. Also, this is the mallet toe, it is hyperflexion of the distal interphalangeal joint. Rupture tendon Achilles. The usual age is those above age of uh, 40 years old. After running or jumping, feel a stroke above the heel or severe stabbing pain above the heel. Cannot stand on the tiptoe. Gap is felt 5 cm above the heel. Simon test by squeezing the calf muscle cause plantar flexion of the foot normally. Absent of plantar flexion, 
means that rupture of the tendon Achilles. As you see in this picture, this is the common side of the rupture of the tendon Achilles. And this we can feel here a defect in the uh, side of the rupture. It is five centimeter above the attachment of the tendon Achilles to the heel. By do Simon test. Simon test by squeezing the calf muscle, usually leading to plantar flexion of the uh, foot. And in affected side, when you squeeze the calf muscle, there is loss of a plantar flexion of the affected side. In acute uh, condition, usually the patient presented with ecchymosis, obvious ecchymosis at the side of the Treatment, operative treatment, repair for the injured uh, tendon by non absorbable suture material and repair for the uh, tendon and then apply the uh, food in equinus position for at least eight weeks then physiotherapy to start. Plantar fasciitis, very common subject. We daily face these problems. It is a pain and tenderness in the sole of the foot, mostly under the heel, with standing or walking. There is a history of sudden increase in sporting activity or changing of the footwear or sport shoes. The pain is often worse when the first getting up in the morning or after a period of rest. The pain can at times be very sharp or it may be changed to a persistent background ache as the patient walk about. The condition can take 18 weeks, 18 months to 36 months or longer to resolve, but is generally self-limiting, but so we must give a time. Pathology. The plantar fascia is a dense fibrous structure that originated from the calcaneum deep to the heel, fat pad, and run distally to the ball of foot, with slips to the each toes. The plantar fascia stiffen with age. The fascia is probably not actually inflamed in this condition, at least not beyond the first week or two weeks of onset. There, be, there may be micro tears in the fascia and the fascia thicken. The term plantar fasciitis sometimes associated with inflammatory disorders such as gout, ankylosing spondylitis, and titer. As you see in this picture, it is the typical site of pain in the heel of the patient. This is the site of a plantar fasciitis due to wear of the plantar fascia and inflammation of the plantar fascia. So the patient presented with pain and local tension at the site of the plantar fascia. Clinical feature. There is localized tenderness. The patient presented with pain, history of pain, and localized tenderness in the sole of the foot, usually at the medial aspect beneath the, heel, beneath the heel, and sometimes in the midfoot. This is essentially clinical diagnosis. If there are, if there are features suggestive and inflammatory disease, seronegative arthropathy, then a blood test may be in the An ultrasound scan show thickening, and sometimes the Doppler test show increased local blood flow and neuro, new, new vascularization, but this investigation is not indicated in every case. Usually we take a plain lateral x-ray for both heel to exclude stress fracture and also to discover if there is a spur or not. The spur is in fact a bony ridge that look a sharp and localized in the x-ray image. It is associated, not a causative feature in a plantar fasciitis. So the spur, it is usually associated with plantar fasciitis. Some patients think that this spur is a cause for pain, but in fact, this spur, it is associated. It is not a cause. It is the sign of a chronic inflammation of the plantar fascia. MRI can be helpful in excluding calcaneal stress fracture which is important in differential diagnosis. Treatment. Rest and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug can be helpful in settling the condition in early stage. Whether orally we give the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug or topically. An analysis of the causative factor very important. Footwear, sport activity, and ex exercise should be, uh, should be uh, taken in our mind. 
there is an important role for the patient in managing uh, the condition with stretching exercise and massage for the food. Patient might be expected or dread an injection into the plantar fascia and they are right to be apprehensive. There is no convenience research to support this and there is evidence to show that it can lead to rupture of plantar fascia which will often immediately ease the symptoms but lead to painful flat foot and impaired sport function so not all patients can give them local steroid injection to decrease the pain we must select special cases for local steroid injection by defumidrol 80 milligram a physiotherapist can help to educate the patient about the condition and it is likely to progress and can emphasize the need for regular stretching regime for 8 to 12 weeks supplemented with local massage for intense or with a foot roller golf ball or frozen water bottle a cushioned heeled pad may be helpful operative treatment rarely the patient need operation and there is no reliable surgical procedure for this condition limited fasciotomy to release part of a plantar fascia can be helped in some cases but there is significant risk of complication including worsening of the condition a promising new intervention include shockwave lithotripsy and localized radiofrequency therapy but these have yet to be fully tested in this Differential diagnosis for plantar fascia, painful fat pad, and nerve entrapment, nerve entrapment of the first branch of lateral plantar. As you see here, this is the typical picture of what we call calcaneal spur that is uh, directed to the plantar fascia. It is sign of chronicity. There is a silicone uh, pad. It is put in the uh, in the uh, shoe. It will help to decrease the pressure and help in the treating of plantar fascia. Sometimes use ice roll bottle under the uh, foot and this will help uh, massage. And this is the site of local steroid injection that not all, all patients need. Traction apophysitis. Traction apophysitis, one of that it is called Seaver's disease. It is thought to be an overuse injury of the calcaneal apophysis in a growing child. Severe disease is more common in boy age, age of 10 to 15 years. In girls, it is usually happen between age uh, of 8 to 13 years. Heel pain that get worse after running or jumping and feel better after rest. The pain may be especially bad at beginning of a sport. A pain and tenderness of an Achilles tendon insertion is diagnosed. Radiograph diagnosis is clinical as there is no established diagnosis criteria. Sclerosis may be present in calcarean apophysis. Fragmentation is more frequently seen in patients with severe disease. Very important is to rule out other causes of heel pain like osteomyelitis and calcarean bone cyst. As is typical case of severe uh, disease. MRI can help to localize treatment. Non-operative the treatment. Symptomatic treatment, actively modification of the and decrease of the uh, sternus exercise, Achilles tendon stretches can help to decrease the, uh, the occurrence. Eyes application before and after at least use of heel cap or heel pad. Not without the anti-inflammatory drugs, sometimes of helpful. Short leg cast immobilization of persistent uh, pain. The outcome is very good and reassurance for the patient and the pain usually will appear after a period of time. Collar disease, it is osteochondritis of the naviculum. It is a painful limp and tenderness in the midfoot, the children less than age of five years. X-ray, dense fragmentation of the navicular bone, usually resolved spontaneously. 
the patient need rest and shoulder anti-inflammatory drug. As you see here, it is avascular necrosis of uh, it is uh, sclerosis of the uh, navicular bone, and we decide the small size of the navicular. Also, this is other picture show the cochlear disease. Freiburg disease. It is a crushing type of osteochondritis, affected head of the second metatarsal, usually seen in young adult women, and the treatment rest and then with the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. And this is the Freiburg disease. Sometimes in severe cases uh, and severe development of osteoarthritis, the patient need arthroplasty for the head of the second metatarsal.